Hello folks, in this video I'm going to go through some of the more important changes of TypeSpeak version 0.2. So the headline feature is that there is going to be an experimental new CoLD model um, released with version 0.2. However, big disclaimer, it is experimental. It's being released for the purpose of gathering test data as opposed to saying that it's a final product. Um, I will go into what the pros and cons are between the base model, which comes with version 0.1 versus the model that comes with version 0.2, but we'll get into that later. More importantly is something that'll affect all users, uh, changes to the user settings.py, and I'll go into that very soon, as well as um, some of the arguments that'll be used to actually test the new model versus the base model, and to actually um, figure out for yourself if um, the new model versus the base model works best for you. Okay, one of the new setting um, that's been added is this use noise sync. What this basically does is it captures other noises and words outside of um, the rules within the ready or not grammar module. What I found is that with my daughter in the background uh, crying or otherwise shouting, um, that will be uh, picked up by tax week as freeze, uh, hands, police, basically a false positive, um, which I want to reduce as much as possible. This noise sync partially addresses it. Um, it doesn't completely uh, remove all noises being picked up as freeze, um, but it, uh, with the new model being particularly sensitive to um, noises and other words, um, this partially addresses it. Just to show um, where it actually is in the ready or not module, as a noise sync rule, it's the uh, same as any other rule. It's got a dictation here, which basically is any other uh, noise or word being picked up. How this sort of works in the background is that um, if that use noise sync argument is our uh, setting is set to true, it'll just add that rule there. What this basically means is that there's a 50-50 <laughs> between uh, a word or a noise being picked up as either being yell freeze or being picked up as, as the noise sync as opposed to 99 to 100% being picked up as freeze. That's all that's really doing there. Okay, uh, listen key padding and ms min max and always max. You can read through the comments if you're interested in the detail, but essentially what this does is with this 170 here, when I release my listen key, which is the thumb button on my mouse by default, um, and with this listen key toggle set to negative one, when I release that mouse thumb button, I want to capture an extra 170 milliseconds of audio, or up to 170 milliseconds. It can actually be less than that if it detects silence. Um, these defaults should work. Um, you can uh, play around and see what works best for you. But if you have listen key toggle um, set to something other than zero or negative one, such as for example two. I recommend changing these values to zero here um, and ms min and max, as well as the uh, vad padding nfs ms, change that to 250 as well. All this is within the comments. Um, you can change it to whatever that you like and whatever works best for you. Okay, um, these other Four settings down here, retain underscore der, audio, metadata, approval function. All these do are basically, they capture .wav audio files as well as um, metadata in a TSV file, put it into a retain directory um, of every successful um, recognition as well as what's defined by this my retain function here. Basically what you need to do is just uncomment um, these settings so that they're actually captured and then that will start to um, capture the audio as well as the metadata. I'll demonstrate it very soon to show what it actually does. So what I'll do is actually change that to true, um, have all that set up and then ta start tax speak. So I just set that debug mode to true so that it actually functions without ready or not uh, a running. And so what I can do is go freeze Drop it, blue team C2 flash and clear, red team full down on me, full team kick and clear. And what that's done is put a TSV file in this retain directory. And if I open it up, you can see 
um, the recognitions that it actually captured blue team C2 flash and clear, red team falling on me, gold team kick and clear it. All of the freeze and um, other noises that were being picked up um, didn't actually get saved here. Um, that's because of this retain function that we've defined here. It doesn't store anything where the rule has a name of noise sync or yell freeze in the rule name there. Okay, so why is this important? Why am I bothering to explain it? Um, is that it can be used to actually test whether the model is actually uh, working best for you. So I've been using the um, new model, uh, which I put in this Colby model folder here, but I also have the base model here as well. Um, what I can do with this retained audio and TSV file is actually test it. Uh, so test it against the base model as opposed to um, what I had with the, uh, with the new model. So what I can do is get this useful help argument to uh, figure out how to actually run the, uh, run the command. And I'm going to do it against a new, test it against a new model first. What that will do is run each of these audio files, run the tests, and actually do a recognition. We'll print out down the bottom um, the word error rate, as well as how many errors that it got, uh, commands that it recognized incorrectly. You'll see that 0% error rate, 0% incorrect um, commands being recognized incorrectly. What it'll also do is output it into uh, three text files as well. The word error rate, you'll see 0%, command uh, errors 0 here as well. So that's with the new model. Um, what I can also do is change that to the base model, run those same tests, see how the base model actually recognizes the same audio, the same data, and see if there's uh, any issues there. And what you'll see is that it actually got a higher word error rate, which is worse. Um, but you'll see that the command error rate, or the number of commands that it got incorrectly, is still zero. So who cares if the word error rate is higher, as long as it gets a command right. However, this is useful as an indicator of whether or not the um, model is actually being more accurate for your particular speech as well. Um, We've just been looking at this overall TXT file, but if we go into the utterances, you'll actually give us the details of each and every single command. And this is very useful to actually figure out, well, where is it actually going wrong? Um, so it's sorted from errors up the top to successful correct recognitions down the bottom. And what you'll see here is one of the words that it uh, misrecognized, didn't get right, is that it actually dropped off it at the end here. This was the reference text, which is within our retained TSV, and this is what the um, base model recognized. Gold team kick and clear, as opposed to gold team kick and clear it. Um, overall, the command was still successful, it still went through, but it's something, uh, the word was incorrect, so it's an indication of whether or not the model is better or worse. How this all sort of feeds into it is you can get an indication of um, one, does the which model actually works better or not? Two, are there any changes to the grammar module that you can change or can experiment with to see whether or not it affects recognition accuracy or, um, or if there's something that you just want to experiment with? And most importantly um, for myself as well as hopefully the community, is that you can post your model results here um, into an issue onto GitHub um, on the TaxPeak uh, repository. I've got an example here of the type of information that I'm looking for. And what I'd like to do is gather that information, figure out where the real hurt areas or where it's not, um, the new model isn't doing so well, and hopefully address that in the future models being developed um, as well as in the future. Uh, release that pipeline so that you can develop your own models in the future. Okay, let me go back. So that's gone through um, high level what the major changes to the version 0 0.2 release are. Um, new model, experimental, some of the changes to the user settings.py that you need to be aware of. Um, 
the test model argument that you can run from taxpeak.exe if you're um, interested in testing your model and hopefully sharing the results with myself on, on GitHub. And uh, finally, there are also some minor changes to the Ready or Not Grammar module. Um, pretty much the only one that's really of major consequence is that it should actually recognize gold whatever command um, more accurately. Um, you can read through the uh, the change log if you're really interested in the details there. But I'll leave it there. Sorry for talking for so long, but hopefully that's enough information there to um, guide you to what's new in version 0.2. Cheers. Hey folks, sorry, in edit, I realize I didn't actually speak what the difference are between the model. Um, basically, the new model is uh, being derived from the base model, it's fine-tuned on an additional about 23 hours of my voice um, speaking ready or not commands. Predominantly, there is some additional dictation or just freeform speech in there as well, but it's predominantly ready or not commands. Okay, uh, in terms of results, it seems like it, there was a significant improvement in terms of uh, word error rate recognition with the fine-tuned model. However, that's purely on the same type of words that were within the fine-tuned training set. In other words, it recognizes ready or not commands a lot easier. However, outside of ready or not commands, it seemed, I haven't quantified this, it seemed to actually do quite, uh, quite a bit uh, worse. Um, the so what of that is basically if you're going to be using the model for ready or not, I, I think the new model should maybe <laughs> be pet, should be good for you or potentially better for you if you're going to use um, use TaxSpeak for any other application or any words that aren't within the ready or not command vocabulary. I would strongly suggest that you actually uh, use the base model or develop a new model um, based from the base model as opposed to the ready or not model. Okay, in terms of what the improvement level is, um, it very strong improvement in terms of word error rate, but in terms of command recognition accuracy, it's only a very slight improvement. It's going from something like 90 to 95% accuracy with the base model to 95 to 99% accuracy. I haven't properly quantified it with confidence, but that's about it. It feels more reliable. Um, I had more missions where it was 100% accurate as opposed to using the base model. There would always be at least one or two commands that there was a misrecognition or just did not recognize whatsoever. Okay, um, and then finally is um, just with my wife testing speaking ready or not commands, found that it was actually uh, less accurate on her voice as opposed to mine. Makes sense, obviously. Um, but I'm not 100% confident if that's, uh, if that's going to be universally true or not. Um, I'm releasing this model in the hope of getting um, test data from, um, from you folks, um, anyone that's actually eager to, to try it. Um, some of the uh, feedback that I got is basically gold and blue team seem to be misrecognized and Stinger and Launcher got recognized with, with my wife's voice. So that's something that I might look into into a future model. So please um, have a look, um, have a test. Please share your results if you can. Um, any, any useful feedback that you can provide um, will go into future models in the future. Okay, thanks folks.